you as you made your way in here. Amen. I pray, I pray you're doing well in this new year and that God has opened some doors for you throughout this year. We're going to go ahead and get started with a little bit of our devotion, and then we're going to move forward into our lesson for this brand new year. Amen. 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 Let it be real. Oh, let it be real. Let it be real. Let it be real. Let, it be real. Let everything you do from the master. Let it be real. Oh, let it be real. Oh, let it be real. Let it be real. Let everything you do from the master. Let it be real. Be guided before you take a seat. Go ahead and lead us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we yes, show this day, oh Heavenly Father, just thank you for another day. Yes, yes. Father God, we thank you for a day that we have never seen before, Father God. God bless and we'll never see again. Just want to tell you thank you. Thank you, thank Lord. Thank you for answering in the name of Jesus, Father God. You just open our ears, Father God, so that we can hear, Father God. Yes, Lord. The word is being taught, Father God, because we in need to take it out Jesus. to a dying world, Father God. Realize, yes, Lord. Father God, that you are alive, Father God. And you are the God of gods and kings of kings, Father God. Yes, thank you, Father God, for those that are gathered here this afternoon, Father God. Yes, Lord. We just thank you, Father God, for just being God in all our lives. Yes, Father God. Master. Father God, that the times we're living in now, Father God, are from trying times. We need Father you, Master. We, we need know, you. Father God, with you, we can do all things. Yes, we Lord. We can't do nothing, Father God. We ask you to continue to touch the pastor, Father God. Touch us, Lord. Touch his body, Father God. Heal him, Father yes, God. Yes, Lord. We ask Father God to just touch everyone in this thank room, Thank you, Master. God. We ask Father God, you bless them according to their needs, bless not their wants, Father God. We just know, Father God, that you're able. To do all things with fail, Father Amen. God. Realize the Father that we're gonna hold you to your promise, Father God. You know that your word will not come back void. Yes, Lord. We give you all the praise on your son that we should truly do deserve. In your son, Jesus Christ, now we pray. Amen. 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 As we as we take our seats, let me just share with you guys. It's so good to see everybody. And God has blessed each one of you to come and assemble with us. Amen. This is indeed our first Bible study of a brand new year. Yeah. Amen. As we discovered last week, we had our leadership uh, with our officers there. And you have an opportunity for us as we're sitting around today to learn. We, we started we started prior to our break in Christmas, uh, focusing on the lesson called Developing a Servant's Heart. Uh, in that, we discovered that uh, there are so many things that God is calling us to. And part of that work, part of what we're doing uh, is understanding that God, through the introduction of what he's doing, he is saying to us uh, that we need to make sure, God, you can give me a little Bible right there, uh, that we need to make sure that we understand, and the Bible, that Bible, the microphone right there. Right. That's it, yes, sir. That we need to make sure uh, that we understand more. Uh, we, we're doing something a little different. Normally we record at night, but uh, since I'm not feeling my best, that's good right there. Thank you. Uh, we decided we're just going to do one and done today. Amen. So let's let's get started. Remember last week, we, we before, prior to us, we started focusing on, the, on developing a servant's heart. And as we started, can I just give you a two-second review here? Uh, as, as we started looking at that, we realized that, that part of the reason why we should be servants of God is because God saved us because he loved us. Remember that. We, we also discovered last time, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, according to John 3 and 16. But then we also found out the reason why he desired for you and I to be a servant is because God's purpose for saving us was to bring who glory? Him, him, glory. him glory. And how do we bring him glory? By our works, by the things that we do. Yep. How do we recognize that? Well, according to Romans 9 and 22, it talks about, amen, the, the very nature of a servant. But then we also found out, and, and this is for some of you, this is just a little bit of review. I, I'm moving forward with this. We also discovered that God saved us so that we can serve how? Like Jesus. And, and this is where we hung our hat on last time. Because according to John 13 and 12, we discovered that there was an instance where Jesus began to wash feet. Can I take you back there? I'm going to yeah. with me right now. I, I know we I came out of Christmas and all that. But can I get you back in John 13? Let's go there. What is this concept, John 13 and 12? What does that mean to us? John 13. 
what, what is Jesus doing here? The Bible said that Jesus had, had just partake of uh, supper with his disciples, and as he had took supper with his disciples, the Bible said that he stood up, according to John 13, verse 12. You got your Bible. And look what it reads. For, for he knew, uh, according to verse 11, who should betray him? Therefore said he, you are not all clean. It's there, verse 12, for he said, so after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, know ye what I have done to you. You call me master, Lord. And you say, well, for so I am. Here it is, verse 14. If then your Lord and master have swatched your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Yeah, man. Now, as we looked at this, we recognized that the veil, that, that washing feet was not popular. But Jesus plainly and probably said, this is the attitude, let me show this to you, that must mark his followers. This is what we should be displaying as we go forward. Here it is, especially the leadership of the church. Now, again, we look at it as not being an ordinance of our Baptist church, because some churches lose that as an ordinance. But we believe that washing feet was symbolic of what we do for others. And because of that, we recognize here that he said, do as I am, as you've seen me do. And like the disciples would gladly wash the feet of Jesus. But he tells us, watch this, to wash whose feet? One another. One another's feet. Now, now again, as, as we go back to that introduction, I'm, I, I'm getting you that, Dee. I'm getting you that. Why is this so important? Because I can't get you in the two until I make sure you got uh, the intro first. <laughs> Look what it says here. How can we watch each other for anything we do? H here it is, Velma, that for another that washes away the grime of the world. Whenever, Shemika, we, we're out ministering, bringing food, whenever we're out doing outreach, whenever we're out doing ministry work, anything that helps them watch the grime of the world, and the dust of the feet and discouragement for them is part of washing feet. Now, as we look again at it, why is this so important for us? Because again, as Jesus said, as you have seen me do, he says, do ye likewise. And, and whatever we, 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 especially as we move now 2022, uh, we, we're asking God, God, what's my purpose? God, what do you have for me to do? Uh, God said the first thing you need to do is start by washing feet. I know you said, well, 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 that's beneath me, but the reality of it is, it's not a figurative stance, but whatever you're doing to help others, whatever you're doing to lift them up, me, me and James were together Monday, and we were talking about how, how, how many people are dealing from discouragement, we got this COVID that, that's still knocking on the door, we got people who are, who are still dealing with so much sickness and all of that, uh, people are discouraged. So what do we do? What can we do to help people to get beyond the discouragement? Here it is. Wash their feet. So as we start to look again at it, we realize that, that the theory of being a servant is worth very much. The practice of being a servant, here it is, pleases God. And what does it do? Fulfills our calling. And so once we understand by way of introduction the concept of washing feet and to serve one another, then we are ready to go forth. Then we're ready to minister. Then we're ready to help others along the way. Everybody got it? Now, as we start to go, where we start to go, I'm going to move you a little bit further here because I want you to get to this point where we understand the fact that we're saved. Now, why are we saved? Jesus served others, and we too should serve others. He saved you so that you might do what? Serve others. And then so doing this, here it is, being praise and honor to God, whose name? Holy name. So as we understand the fact that not only uh, does Jesus, hey, you good? Everybody good back there? Uh, as we start to understand this concept of why he saved us and why we should be serving, can I tell you there's also an expectation to serve? Amen. Why is that important? Here it is. God expects us, as you and I, watch this, to continue to work on being saved. That means just because you have Confess the Lord Jesus, go to Romans 10, and believe in your heart, accept him. That's not the end. The Bible says work out your own salvation. Fear and trembling. How do we do that? We do that, here it is, by completing, by doing all we can to stay fruitful. You got to understand that Galatians talks about the fruit of the Spirit. And, and there are some fruit that we ought to be bearing. Some fruit of love, goodness, mercy, 
All of those are fruit that we should be bearing uh, because of what God has done in our life. And so as we look again there, we do this by obeying the Lord, serving the Lord. And here it is, and allowing our hearts and mind, here is the key for us, to be what? Renewed. Every day we got to be renewed. The Bible says that because you are in Christ, you are now what? A new creation. The old thing passed away. How, how often does it pass away? Every day. Every day you got to crucify that flesh. Yes, sir. Every day you got to put yourself in a position where you say to God, God, help me to be what you desire for me to be. So as we start to look at it, we realize we have an expectation, according to the introduction, to serve. And so as we start to move forward from this, and I want to share this with you, we find ourselves now, I got your outline, uh -oh. <laughs> developing a service heart, called to be a servant. Amen. That's how I heard a little bit. Some of y'all didn't get the first part. Let me just throw that in. Now, what are we talking about here? Well, when we look at the introduction here, being a servant is countercultural. Uh, I mean, you outline. Everybody got chapter two in front of them. Put in the concerns of another head of your society's interest and priorities appears foolish. Yet it is exactly the call to every Christian. God did what? Create it. When he made you, he created you. We are workmanship of God. And when he created each of us, he created all of us with a unique purpose. Amen. Amen. Now, here is the key for us. We may not know what the purpose is, but God knows. And the more we develop a relationship with him, he begins to help us understand what our true purpose is in it lies to him. And so as we look at it, he said we all are created, first of all, with a unique purpose. Deacon Thomas, watch this. At the exact time in history that we live, he makes no mistakes. So that doesn't mean that just because you don't have the gift to cook, doesn't mean he didn't give you a gift. Just because you can't sing like Shirley Caesar, does not mean you don't have a gift. All of us have gifts. All of us have talents. All of us have a purpose that God has designed for our lives. And so because of that, the design he made us is the one he intends for us to use for him. So as we start to look at this, here it is for us. Uh, every Christian, every Christian is called to serve. Now, as we start to look at our, our lesson, here is the key for us. What does it mean to be a servant of God? Y'all had some Christmas and, and New Year. What does it mean for you to be a servant of God? Anybody want to jump on that? Being obedient. Being obedient, okay. Anybody else? What does it mean for you to be a servant of God. Anybody need a pen? I got it. We got a whole bunch of them up here. Amen. You gonna pass them back for me. All right. Somebody says, sir, anything else? What does it mean to be a servant of God? Well, Pastor, you know, to me, it's, uh, all of us have a gift. Amen. And, and really, we should know our gift and our gift. Amen. And then complete our gift out there. The Lord expects us to do our daily work. Amen. Amen. We should know those gifts. We but, should know but, but here is the key for us. And just like a little baby, you don't expect a baby to do uh, sixth grade work. That's right. They, they've got to learn. They, right. They've got to understand if they're good at math or they're good at reading or they're good at other things. Mm -hmm. And so likewise, it's the same thing with us. We don't automatically come in the world knowing how gifted we are. Mm -hmm. Those gifts have to come about. Those gifts have to be uh, crafted uh, because the Bible says if you if you do the right thing, they'll make moves. Yes, ma'am. I like to uh, to me. What does it mean to be a servant of God? Mm -hmm. If you're a servant of God, you are obedient. Uh, you know, you're gonna do what God said in His Word. Amen. And we have to crawl like you said, crawl before you walk. You amen. learn it as, as you go. Somebody, amen. somebody uh, chimed in and said obedience, obedience. They're all right with it. Look again at this text because I, I want to share this with you because first of all, the servant of God uses all he is. For the glory of God alone. Willing to face, here it is, fear. Amen. Yeah. We've had to face some this year. Amen. Already. Ridicule and even anger to obey who? The king of right. kings. Thanks. So as we look at it, we recognize, first of all, that to be a servant means not only to walk in obedience, but to use all that we have for whose glory? Yeah. His glory. So I think sometimes the issue that we have, especially in our churches, is that you think you're gifted and talented. But you want to use them to be uplifted and pat on the back. God says, wait a minute, you missed the theological uh, ramifications of this. God didn't give you gifts so that you can be patted on the back. No. 
so, so that people can call you all of this and that. No, you were given gifts so that God can, can begin glorify. to use you, to, that God can glorify yes, in the things that you're doing. Right. So, Shamika, if God has blessed you with that gift to cook, then you got to do it, I know, for, for the glory of God. And when we learn to do it for the glory of God, guess what the Bible said? It makes room for you. And that is what we are right now when we start to look at uh, who is this king of kings. You realize that that king of kings is indeed God. That's our father. That is him who has blessed us. And so here it is for us. Uh, when we think about this, he did not come. This is Jesus as a what? Superstar. But he came as a servant. Let's, let's look at that. Because when you think about a superstar, some, 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 sometimes people, they, 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 they want to be uplifted. They, they, they want to uh, be celebrated. We never saw that in Jesus. We, 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 in one occasion, Jesus said, uh, birds have their nest, fox have their hole, but even the Son of God has no one to lay his head. God didn't, Jesus did not come to be a superstar, but he came that you and I may have life and that we may have it more abundantly. So when we start to look at it, here it is for us. Do we have superstars in our churches? Who? Yep. My, my, my. <laughs> do, 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 do we have them? I, I, I'm not going to please don't call nobody's name and you know because uh, the, that there are some people that the only time they want to be in ministry is the fact that you got to call their name. Only time they want to sing in the choir is they got to sing their song. Yeah. Only reason they want to be in leadership is that they can tell somebody what to do. Right. You got to understand the Lord did not send us to be superstars, but He sent us to be servants. Sure. Everybody got it? Yeah. And so as we start to look at this concept of, of, of servant, here it is for us. Jesus was the true servant Amen. of God. Here it is for us. Uh, because he's the true servant of God. Watch what happens here. His three-year ministry was a powerful example of servanthood. How do we know? Because if you began to read what Jesus did in three and a half years, uh, we began to see him uh, reaching his hand out to help those who were sick. Amen. We saw him teaching. We saw him going into places, treating people uh, who, who, who people would not talk to, people who were blind, people who, who were, were ain't not able to walk. This was Jesus' ministry. I know sometimes we, we, we kind of romanticize Jesus and think the only time we saw Jesus with, with the long coat on and, and, and the kingly attire, he only went in to preach sometime and then got back in his Rolls Royce and rode down to his mansion. No, that's not the Jesus we talk about in the Bible. Amen. Amen. And so as we start to look at it, we recognize, first of all, that in his ministry, here it is, he was the one that, that changed water to wine at a wedding feast. Y'all here with me? Uh, he, 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 was, he was the one that, that did a sacrificial death on the cross. Yep. He willingly gave himself up. Uh, he, he began to shout with them that, that here it is, I, I give you my hand. You think I'm going to run, I give you my hand. If you think I'll fight you, he, here I am, nail me to a cross. This was Jesus. He, his sacrificial death on the cross in which his own blood flowed freely. Here it is for the salvation of all who believe in who? In him. Yeah. 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 And until we understand this concept, it's going to be hard for you to get beyond yourself. Because if, if he was willing to shed his own blood so that others can be saved, here is the key for us. What are you willing to do to get other people saved? Y'all y'all with me today? Yeah. What are you what are you are you willing to give of your time and your talents? Are you willing to give even of your treasure so that other people can 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 can, can experience that same salvation that you have? Amen. That becomes important to us because far too many times there are people who are unwilling to give up self. That's right. Amen. Amen. I, you always hear me say this. That that two that's two different forms. You can be selfish. Or selfless. Right. And I believe there has to be a, a, a careful, uh, Charles, you with me here. There's got to be a, a careful balance Amen. Of, 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 of being selfless, but also being selfless. Because if you be selfless all the time, Bill, somebody going to run over you. Somebody, somebody going somebody gonna to treat you all the time because they didn't know you're going to do it. Because they, uh, here it is. There's going to come a time when you got to be selfish. There's going to come a time when you got to tell people, no, I got to get in my word. I got to get. I got to do what God is calling me to do. I know you want me to go out and hang out with you. I know you want me to be your faithful. Oh, look, sometimes you got to take some time for yourself and say, okay, Lord, I just want just more of you. That's it. And, and, and less of this. That's 
Yeah. And how do we get there? We have to realize that, that, that here Jesus shows us that even in the flowing of his blood, he shows us part of our role is to show and to share with them even if who believe. So as we move a little further, can I share this with you? Uh, that, that part of that, part of that comes from what we call examples. Uh, when we think about example of servants, let's, let's, let's pause for a minute. What are some examples that you can give of servanthood? Anybody? Yeah. What are some examples of servanthood that you see? Go on and check on the sick and shut in. Yes, ma'am. Examples of servanthood. I don't want to say because I used to do it all the time, but mm -hmm. then the pandemic comes. Passing out tracks and telling God loves you. Amen. God loves you. you Servanthood. Amen. All right. Servant. Anybody else? What what have you, and you can make it personal, what have you done to demonstrate servanthood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Chapter, when I was in New York, and uh, I used to go to nursing home. Amen. 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 Now, now we're starting to see how, how being a servant can oftentimes lead to not only ministry, but it leads to glorifying God. Yep. Because anytime you're doing things and you're not trying to get paid right. for it, you're not you're not trying to do it for some people and not do it for others. And here, here it is. You, you become part of that servant mm -hmm. that he's calling us to. I want to share with you because what Jesus does for us is that Jesus gives us three examples to follow. And I'm going to share these three examples with y'all. And I promise y'all I'm not going to hold you long. Amen. I need to get back in my bed in a few minutes. Amen. Right. Amen. I couldn't let y'all die today. I said, I'm going. I'm going. Amen. Let's talk about the examples. That Jesus showed us. Uh, in, in the book of John, in the book of John, uh, chapter 12, verse 23, I'll just share this with you because according to what Jesus leaves for us, is one example of what it means to be a servant through an, an analogy of being planted like weeds. Look again at John chapter 12, verse 24. Look what it says. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies. It remains only a single seed. But if it dies, please get this, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves the life will lose it. While anyone who hates their life in the world would keep it for eternal life. That last verse, verse 20 said, said, whosoever serves me must follow me and where I am my servant also will be my father, but honor the one who what serves me, not the one who's in charge, not the one who wants the glory and the pass on the back. Yeah. But he says the Lord will honor those who do what yeah. serve. Yeah. So let's unpack this. Let's unpack this, John chapter twelve, because again, as we start to look at, here it is for us. He says, first of all, the hour has come. We see that in the hour. Now you got to understand that. Uh, for, for three and a half years, Jesus was doing ministry. He was healing. He was, he was doing all that he could to be a blessing to others. And throughout the whole concept of him helping others, he would oftentimes say, my hour is not here. But now he says, the hour has come. This, this becomes significant to us. Why, why is Jesus talking about the hour that had come? Well, when we look at that outline, look what he talks about when he talks about the Greeks. The Greeks had heard of Jesus. And perhaps his reputation as a teacher, work of miracles, what they did know of Jesus made them want to know more about him. When they came to Philip asking to see Jesus, and Jesus said that the time was not yet. Ah, wait a minute now. Jesus said that the time was not yet, that the people were not ready for it. What is Jesus saying? He said, watch this. When we start to look at it, why did they know Jesus made them want to know more about him? Why did Philip ask to see Jesus? Now, I, I, I've done some searching here. And, and one of the things I want to share with you is that when you're doing good works, when you're helping others, you attract people. Yo, can, can, I, can I say it again? When, 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 you, when you're doing all kind of hell and stuff, folks don't want to be around. But when you're doing good things, when you're trying to help others, yeah. when you're trying to extend a helping hand, uh -huh. it becomes contagious yeah, to people yeah. because I, I, I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to be around all kind of niggas. Uh -uh. 
You want to be around folks who always got uh, uh, grumbling and complaining about everything in the sun. Yep. But, but for folks who, who are doing good things, mm -hmm. who, who, are, who, are, who are extending their hands and, and, yeah. and, and working for, for the building of God's yeah. kingdom, those are the kind of people I want to be around. Amen. Yeah. Paul says in 2 Corinthians, yeah. Don't, do not be unyoked with unbelievers. That's right. Because he said, what fellowship with light is with darkness? Here it is for us. When you learn to be around folk of light, Come on. then you start bearing light. Whoa. If you hang out with darkness all the time, Whoa. then that is what you're going to operate in. So here is what Jesus is saying to us. He said to us that, that here it is. Because he's doing what he's doing, people wanted to know him. That's right. People wanted to see him. That, that's the reason why uh, people flocked to Jesus. That's right. Jesus didn't have Facebook. That's right. Jesus didn't have a, 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 a big uh, sanctuary. No. Jesus just did what he did. All right now. And it attracted people. Yes, yes, he, he went where that was a need. Went where that was a need. He always went where that was That's a need. That's it. Mm -hmm. so, so notice what happens is we start talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus began to tell them that his time was not yet. Right. Let's go a little further. What, what kind of king are you? When we start to look at this, Jesus began to say to them and make it clear that he was not to be a political but for the longest, the people were expecting him to be the long-awaited Messiah who would, who would come and, 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 and get them out of Roman Empire and occupation. And, and Jesus says, wait a minute, you, you missed the whole concept. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I didn't come to be a political leader. I, I didn't come to pick up arms. I came to give you life. Mm -hmm. I, I came to show you how to live in a certain way where God can get the glory. So he said to them that he's not there to be a political king so that the people might experience a better temporal earthly existence. But watch this. He was called to be the king of kings. Oh, right. Here it is in front. Who, who would reign over an eternal kingdom not made with human hands. Oh, so, so when we start to really understand Jesus, while well, it is that, uh, then oftentimes we, we're seeking out the fame and fortune. Uh, and we're talking about being Christians and being Christ-like. We miss it. And sometimes we have to be careful because so oftentimes we see churches who talk about prosperity. They start talking about all of this. But we never talk about sin. We oh, never talk about lifting oh, people. Man. We never talk about how to meet people at their need. But but we're, we're quick to tell people, give me a dime, give me a quarter, give me a dollar. I send you a cloth, and, and you can be blessed by the prosperity oh, ministry. Can I just be real with you? Uh, prosperity ministry ain't gonna help you when you come on now. Y'all gonna talk to me in a minute. Let's just be real. You know, some, some, I know you said, well, I, I want to put my money on the table. I'm praying God just opens the door and invest me. But there comes a time where God said, I'd rather have a relationship with you than that, that, that to give you all the money that you got me playing in here. Because money is temporal. It's earthly. But an earthly relationship with God lasts forever. That means to you and I. That's what that's what Jesus said. Don't don't build your treasures up down here on this right. earth where they right. rust and, and moss come in and tear and, and tear them But build your treasures on things above. Yeah. Because the things above are the things that are gonna last. Right. Not all this stuff. How about I know? Because the same outfits you wore this year, you ain't gonna wear next year. Right now. Some of us have gotten big enough, you know, I had that cough about five years, ready to give me some money. Right. Because they're temporal. They're, they're, they're not a lasting thing because these are earthly devices that we're, we're, here it is. we spend all of our time trying to get, Come on. but forget that we ought to be working on our heavenly rewards, yes. not the earthly rewards. Come on. So he said to you and I that, 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 that Jesus comes to be the king of kings. He, he's come to establish an eternal king. But then he comes back. I'm going to take you to John 12 because I, I believe this is important. Uh, if, if you can, John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Mm -hmm. Verse 23. Uh, we're back in there saying, look, look what he said. And, and Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Let's look at it again. Remember when we started to look at it, we, said, we started out saying, he said the hour has not come. And now according to verse 23, he replied, the hour has come for the Son of God to be what? Glorified. Glorified. Now, here, here is where we get into this idea of being planted. The Bible said that Jesus shared with us that the contract, here it is for us, uh, that, 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 that the Greeks ushered in the climax or, or the height of Jesus' mission to the world. But now he is ready to be glorified through dying for the world. Now it was time for Jesus to make 
Here it is, the final sacrifice. Let's look at it again. Jesus shared with them that, that the Greeks ushered in the climax of the height of Jesus' mission to the world. Because here it is, even when those who were Jews rejected Jesus, Jesus said that, that then I'm going to offer to anyone who called on my name. Right. So he said, it's not just reserved for, for just one of y'all who are in the church. He said, I came that it be life for all who believe. And so when we start to look at it, we look at it from the standpoint of the fact that he says, now is he's ready to be glorified. Here it is through dying for the world. Now, remember, we're talking about service. We're talking about planting. And, and now we get into what he began to share with us. He said, the hour has come. But then he said, the Son of Man shall be glorified. Now, I'm going to share this with you because when we start to look at it, Jesus didn't mean that he would be glorified in the eyes of men. Because any time that uh, a person was put on a cross, uh, put on, on a piece of wood, it was cursed. He was willing to take a curse so that you and I can have life. So we realize that he said that humiliation of being put on a cross, he said it had nothing to do with being glorified by men. Right. But what he was ultimately saying is the fact that, that the glorification Jesus pointed to here was being glorified, here it is, on the cross. Now, most of us miss this concept because we, we wonder, Okay, Jesus, wait a minute now. You, you're, you're going to be put on the cross. They're going to whip you uh, with, with, with catamine stripes. We, we, they're, going to, they're going to put a cross uh, on your back. They're going to put, uh, as we look at it, they're, they're going to put a crown of thorns on your head. How is that glorified? Hmm. What, what kind of glory can you get from the fact that they tear your clothes off and gamble at the foot of the cross for your gods? That doesn't seem like glorification. I don't know about y'all, but that, 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 that just boggled my mind the first time I looked at it. I said, wait a minute, Jesus. You're telling me I've I got to be a servant, that I've got to uh, take on my cross and follow you? I, I don't, I don't want to. If that's the case, I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> Jesus said, wait a minute, Evan, you're going to miss this in a few minutes if you don't look at it again. What is he saying to us? Well, what he's saying to us is the fact that something the world could only see as a disgraceful humiliation. Jesus saw as being glorified. Come here. Let's, let's, let's dig into this. When we start to look at it, we realize that, 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 that he, he's, he's sharing with us that here it is. Jesus shows us that the ultimate goal for a Christian is not found, watch this, in man-made systems. Right not found in alliances with the world, but rather through the ultimate act of ministry and serving. Can, can I tell you, uh, how, how 2022 can, can work out for you? All right. Start recognizing the fact that God has called you to ministry. All right. He's called you to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. and, and when you have those concepts in mind, guess what happens? The Lord begins to, to, to see all that you do, and he gets the glory. Remember we talked about in, in that first intro, how do we glorify God? By what we do. Right. And, and, and if you're willing to go out and help others, if you're willing to glorify others, here it is for us then this is what God has called you and I to do. Mm -hmm. So as we look again and we realize that here it is for us, for him it was a sacrificial death. For him, the way he would be glorified is that he would die for you and I. Mm -hmm. Now you say, well, preacher, oh, oh that's good, but, but, but get, make it plain for me. How, how, how does this work for me? Because I don't want to die. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to give my life right now. But God is saying, to him, wait a minute now, if we begin to look about it, God gave so much more. I've I, I learned a long time ago, you can't out give God. How do I know? Because God says uh, he so loved the world <laughs> that he gave his only begotten son. You cannot out give God. You cannot out serve God. But what we can do is the little bit that we can do ought to be something that glorifies God. So as we look again, John chapter 12, verse 24, and here's what it says. Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies. Hmm. Let's look at this again. Uh, 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 if we look at it, the whole top topic says, "Better than I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds." Now Jesus almost confused most of us in this. Okay, Jesus, if the seed is buried, how does it manifest? 
into greater fruit. Hmm. Let's look at it again. When we look at it, here, here is what he said. Jesus said that just as a seed will never become a plant unless it dies. Okay, y'all gonna see this in a minute. And it's buried. <laughs> So the death and burial of Jesus was necessary to his glorification. So until you learn to, 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 to put some things and to bury some things, it can never produce anything. This is what it's saying. And so what Jesus is ultimately saying to you is before that can be resurrection power and fruitfulness, there must be death. Okay, okay, okay. Y'all, y'all, y'all tight on me today. I, I, until you start to let some stuff die. You can never experience resurrection. Right. Until the old habits die. Amen? Mm-hmm. Until that wayward ways die. Until the old habits die. Yep. You can never experience the resurrection power. Yep. Amen? That's why Jesus said every day I'm being crucified. Mm-hmm. And if we're really in Christ, that is what he is saying to you. you got to crucify self. Every day. Amen? And I don't know how many of y'all wake up holy every day. That, that ain't my testimony. Sometimes I don't really be in crap. <laughs> I, I just do, y'all. Y'all, sometimes I, I, I'm asking God, God, every time I look around, here's another phone call. Here's this happen. This happen. God, God I, I just need you to help me to let me die a little bit today so that you can be glorified in me. Amen? Anybody ever prayed that prayer? Lord, Lord let, me, let me let some stuff die so, so that you can start to live in me. Go ahead, God. Yes, sir. Um, and, and it's funny because, you know, you look at the point of where the more he reveals what needs to change. Exactly. What needs to be, you know, crucified in you. Yeah, right. that's, that's something I had to learn because sometimes, you know, I got I get an attitude sometimes. God said that's 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 gotta die. Amen. You know, yeah. you know, so sometimes, you know, when you do me wrong, I'm, I'm like, I ain't I ain't dealing with you, I ain't stunning you. And that and that's something God has to help me to deal with. Yeah. Because he's saying to me ultimately, look, look, Thomas, you you can't you gotta love for them, yeah. even if they treat you wrong. Yeah. That's right. And I, I'll be honest with you, I'm still working on that. I ain't, I, I ain't truly there yet, but I, I thank God that I'm better than I used to be. <laughs> so, so if we think about it, we think about it. I said that that before that can be resurrection power and fruitfulness, there must be what death. Here it is for us when you start to talk about it. In order to bear fruit, I mean, I mean, you're out mind, and produce many seeds. Here it is for us. He must cease to be a kernel of wheat. But he has to morph into what that seed is destined to become. Right. You think about it. When you bury a seed, the seed does not stay a seed. Come on now. Let's just talk about it. No, no. It does not just stay a seed, but if, if it's properly watered, if, 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 it's, if it's conducive to growth, yes, then it ceases to become a seed and it becomes a plant that bears much fruit. Right. Right. That's, that's, what, that's what he's trying to say to you and I. Yeah. And he made it real plain because mm-hmm. it's the crumb that corn. Yep. You can plant one seed if you want. You're going to get a whole stalk. That's it. Yeah. That's why you have to be careful about what you sow. Because mm-hmm. it's going to come up again. It's going to come up again. More than what you sow. More than what you yeah. sow. So you be sow. careful what you sow. Come on now. What you plant. Come on. Yeah. I got it. I got it. All right. So, so look what he's saying <laughs> to you and I. That, that when we look at it, you know, God has said, Wh- whatever you, you plant, whatever uh, seed is planted, Right. That's what's coming up. It's coming up. Yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. If, if you sow seeds of discord, it's coming, it's coming up. up. If you sow seeds of anger and hatred it's and envy, coming it's coming up. So good seed. And, and if we really want to understand this concept of, of letting some things die, we, we got to plant some good things so a good things can come up. Yes, sir. That's, 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 that's so awesome for the simple fact that is that, you know, we, we as adults and whatever, you know, and mm-hmm. our children. Amen. And, and, and we look at them when they're young. And, you know, they just, oh, they so pretty, so cute, so nice, you know. Then all of a sudden, they grow up. Uh-oh. You know, because everything you planted now. And now you want to win a child. Oh, my, my, my. You don't plant this all these years. Who's that child? Yeah, that's right. Well, well, we, 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 can, we can go a little further than that, you know, because uh, oftentimes as, as a pastor, sometimes I look out 
And I say, okay, 13 years of ministry and preaching is over. And, and, and it seems like sometimes uh, that, that, that what had been said and preached Amen. didn't take root. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and that sometimes can be just the same concept. Uh -huh. and, you know, and, and again, you know, what we have to always learn to do is we have to keep doing what we do. We keep planting that seed, and hopefully one day it will, it will, it will come up. Day. And become what? Many seeds. That, that's what Jesus is saying to you and I. That, that he's, he's ready uh, for us to learn how to plant some things so that when he comes up, it will be many. You ready for love? As it pertains to Christ, what he is in human form is as that kernel of wheat. In order, in, in, in order to, 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 to bear fruit and produce many seeds, he must cease to be a kernel of wheat. But he got the morph into what that seed is destined to become. He was destined to be a king of kings. He was destined to sit in the right on the right hand of God. Yes, but in order for him to get and to be elevated, he had to first of all die. And, and, and this is something that, that we have to always look at as, as a part of the church. What are you willing to let die so that God can elevate you? So that he can take you to the, the next level in your life. And this is that concept that he's sharing with you and I. That, that, that here it is. When, when we realize that God is destined us to do something, here it is. What are you willing to do to morph into what God is destined to be? Amen? So here it is for us. When we think about it, Christ would produce millions of seeds by his death. How do we know? Because he enabled sinners to come to God in repentance. We too should also consider that we are seeds that must die in order to become what we are destined to be. Can I say this, y'all? Everybody got a destiny on their life. And your destiny may not end because you retire. Your destiny may not end because you raise your children. Until God takes us home, we are still working out our destiny. Anybody believe that? And so because of that, we've got to continue to work so that God can help us to be what we are destined to be. And so as, as we start to look at it, here it is for us. In the case of Christ, it is a glorified Christ and his body, the church. Watch this. Animated by his Holy Spirit, sent by Jesus from his place at the right hand of the Father to continue his ministry of preaching good news to the world. So, as we start to look at it, here is Jesus showing us that if you want the elevation in your life, if you want to be glorified so that God can give the glory, he says with us simply, watch this, that we've got to make sure that we are doing what it can to continue his ministry. Amen? Amen. Because when we learn that it is his ministry, it's, it's being Christ-like, it is being planting the seed so that we can grow in the things that God has. Because here it is, the more we plant the good news, the more the good news pops up. And so this is what he's ultimately saying to you and I, that, that we've got to make sure that that spirit that's sent by Jesus is, is always constantly placing us and, and helping us to preach that good news. Here it is. And because of that, here it is for us, it was true of Jesus, and it is also true of his followers. God made us and called us, here it is, to bear fruit. But as long as as we hold on to the word, Come on now. as long as we hold on to our old ways, it is impossible. By loving and holding on to our life in this world, we lose it for the next. That's, That's what he's ultimately saying to you and I, that, 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 that one of the things that Jesus shared with us is that we cannot, if we keep holding on to the stuff in this world, it's going to prevent you, it's going to hinder you from being what God decides right. for you to be. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I know. Yeah. Some of us had to change a whole lot I know. In, in order for us to be able to even work in the church. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. <laughs> some of y'all got some real witnesses. Go ahead. Yeah, right. I'm a witness because, you know, when I was in the world, I love the things of the world. Amen. If the world got it, I want it. That's it. And you can tell it because when you go up play, you can't tell the world from the church. Amen. It's Amen. a difference, y'all. That's it. It's a difference. Anybody else had, had to leave some stuff behind in, in order for you to truly be able to say, you know what? I'm trying to make it in. I got to change some stuff in my life. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. After, you know, uh, I was 38 years old in 1992 when I left New York. And the first thing I did, I asked God to take me to California. 
Mama. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I, I, I'm a witness too. I, I I grew up with a bad man. When people made me mad, I wanted to knock holes in doors. My mom would always tell me, she said, boy, you owe me money for all them holes you knocked in the door you got mad. And that's something that I had to learn to deal with. That's something that God had to help me to, uh, to, 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 to get through. Because again, I couldn't, I couldn't grow up getting mad and want to fight all the time. That, that's, that's not the Christian matter. That's not the Christian thing. And there you go. And, 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 and that is something that uh, for all of us, we, we've all had to ask God to create in me a clean heart. New in me that right spirit. Because if you truly want to be what God wants you to be, you got to first be able to tell God, let me, uh, here it is, let me lose some stuff so that I'll be ready for the next one. Amen. All right, last but not least, he, he who, watch this, love is life, he said we'll lose it. Watch what this text says. It says, we, we, we who are born again are called to hate our lives. Let me, let me say that again. We who are born again yes, are called to hate our lives, not in the sense that we disregard it or trade it, but we are asked to surrender it. Free it. Here it is. Give it up for his abundant life or eternal life. Come on now. You gotta understand that until you're ready to give up some stuff, you can never really truly be able to experience eternal life. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Because some people want to hold on to this and still be able to step into this. You, you can't. Amen. That old song says, "You can't straddle the fence." Amen. 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 We want to straddle the fence. You know, we we want to be all holy on Sunday. Uh -huh. and, you know, the rest of the week we doing whatever we want to do. Uh -huh. but, the reality of what Jesus is teaching is that we've got to surrender my life for his life. I'm going to give my all to him. And when I give my all to him freely, because here it is for us, uh, God doesn't make us give our life to him. We are the only creatures that God made that have free. We, we, all, we all have the ability to choose. Man has the ability to reason and to choose. And so God is not going to make you come to church. Right. Let's just be real. He's not gonna make you be saved. He, he, he's not gonna make you read your Bible. That's that's part of the free will that you have as, a, as an individual. But when we start to choose Him, when we start to say to God, God, I'm gonna surrender my heart. Come on now. I'm gonna freely give everything to you. I want to walk in abundance. I want to have that eternal life that you have for me. That is when. That is when we live our best life. That's it. And so watch what He said to you and I. Loving our current life will cause us to refuse Jesus' invitation to come, watch this, and follow him. Because there are certain things that Jesus is going to require for you and I to do that is contrary to the word. Amen? Let's be real with you. God, God oftentimes say when, 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 when somebody slapped one cheek, he said, turn the other cheek. That's contrary. When, when, come on, y'all. Let's talk a little bit. When he's telling us, you know, to, uh, to put ourselves yes, in a position where we love people that don't love us, that's mm -hmm. hard to do. Yeah. So when we start to really look at it, we recognize, first of all, that if we want to continue with our current life, uh, it, it's hard for us to accept that invitation from him. Because he wants everything. Everything. He, he, he wants the bad <laughs> reputation. He, he, he wants the habits that you have. He, 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 wants, he wants you to give it all to him. Yeah. And if we are unwilling to give it all to him, then here it is. It's going to be hard for us to follow him. Come yeah. on now. Yeah. This is what he's saying to you and I, that our life is precious to us. Yeah. Especially because it is something we will have to lose to gain abundant life. So, my brothers and sisters, as we start to look at it, he says, he who hates his life in this world. In this world. And, and why is he saying this? And I, I got, I'm going to leave it right here. Why is he saying this? Because, watch this. We are to disregard this world, which applies to the present age, which also includes the domination of stopping what Satan is. You got to realize that Satan does have some authority in this world. Oh, yeah, he's a prince. And, 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 and yeah, you got to realize he's. he's he, he, he's the prince of darkness. That's what the word says. He's Belzebub. Come on now. He, he's, a, he's a deceiver. Mm -hmm. He's a manipulator. Come on. And, 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 and if we're not careful, we can fall into the trap. Come on. Yeah. And, and this is what he's saying to you and I. 
with, with him, he keeps you from falling in the traps of the enemy. Yes, and because of that, watch this, uh, seeing instead that we are not residents, but are merely pilgrims, sojourners, who are looking, watch this, for a better realm. But by home in heaven, instead of down here. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm done. I'm done. I'm going back to get in the bed. Get in the bed. I thank Very God good. for all of y'all. May heaven shine on you as I pray. Amen. Amen. And that's good to have everyone of you back with us. Amen. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Father, we bless you right now for uh, the grace that you allowed us to come into this day. God, now as we come before you, we have so many, God, that are sick, so many that are struggling. So many, God, who are going through, God. Lord, we, we know that there's a list of members in the hospital. We know that yeah. there are some that are going through death. There are some, God, that are experiencing all types of sickness in their body. So, God, we recognize that you are healer. Yeah. And because you are healer, we ask, God, that you would just show up, have your way, in the lives of these, your people, God. Now, God, we pray that you dismiss us from this place, that we're from your sight, yeah. and in your name to be praised. Amen. And everybody say, yeah.